Okay, review time. This is the MPOW Solar Motion Sensor Light. It's got a solar cell on it, and it got, I presume it recharges the battery, and uh, it's motion sensing, so when you go past it, of course, it should light up. Um, I'm going to tear it apart and see how it's built. Okay, obviously it's assembled. Uh, this is the solar panel, and of course it connects into a small circuit board. The circuit board has this motion sensor on one side. There's a couple of ICs. One's a charge controller for the lithium battery in blue here and the other is a LED driver and uh, then just under this bit of black plastic uh, there is two strips of LEDs uh, one on this side and one on this side. It's an edge lit uh, approach. Okay let's talk about the solar panel. Uh, it's rated to be one and a half watts according to the uh, data sheet. It's a monocrystalline panel it looks like and it's about 130 centimeters by about 83 centimeters so uh, of course, the question is, does it really produce one and a half watts? Uh, then that kind of tooling is a bit tricky because you need a sun source, which is calibrated. But uh, in the spirit of engineering, it's actually easy just to check from a vendor whose data sheets you might consider more reliable. Uh, here's the one from Kuyasira, um, and it's a very large panel, 325 watts, but uh, it gives you some sort of good uh, touchstone to see if uh, this panel is even in the zone. Uh, if you look at the Kuyasira and you work it all out, it's uh, producing around 100 and 53 watts per uh, square meter and uh, this one here actually if you do the math on it, it's 140 watts per square meter so it's certainly a plausible number actually this is about a one and a half uh, watt panel okay so uh panel's just been taken out and uh this is a uh, an array of leds and uh behind it's a, a panel it's an edge lit panel essentially it's a, a bit of a plexiglass and then they've wrapped it with two bits of uh white material this is actually a really pleasant way of uh, creating a very even light. So uh, the one thing about this product, actually, it looks quite good when it's installed. Um, it creates really a really lovely even light. You don't get any hot spots, and that's uh, a testament to the, the relatively sophisticated optical engineering in it with the uh, use of an LED strip on one side. Uh, let's see, push it on this side as well. There's a, another strip down here as well. So there's two strips illuminating that plastic panel. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, panel a bit more. It's uh, got a couple of pictures of the inset. Uh, it's quite sophisticated. They polished it here, of course, for the uh, LEDs on both sides to get the light into the panel. And then so it doesn't escape in the sides, they actually put some uh, foil tape on this side and this side here. I was going to set them pictures. So optically, it's a very sophisticated assembly, and that's what creates a, a, that very even light. Okay, so the product claims to be IP64 compliant, that's ingress protection. The 6 stands for dust ingress and the 4 for water resistance, uh, which sounds like a pretty good thing with a uh, bulb that's mounted outside. Uh, you can see a couple instant problems with that claim, though. There's uh, some gasketing here, which goes into a groove here, and that's good. The problem is, of course, the gasketing uh, was meant to go all the way around even this edge here, but of course on the metal piece you can see they stop shy, so actually there is a gap here. Now, the 4 is for water ingress, it's only a spray, uh, but the 6 says it's completely sealed from dust, which I don't think that would be a claim that could uh, survive closer inspection. The other thing you find, of course, really interesting uh, from an engineering viewpoint is um, how they keep on goofing up things. Um, so you have a panel here, and there's, of course, some holes which mount the plate downwards, and you can see the mounting points are all here, but the gasket's on the outside. And, uh, long time ago I was taught very much so that, that you could put the gasket on the uh, other side because what you don't want is uh, you had a water barrier here but then you end up having a hole right after your water barrier and then they have to end up putting a little tiny goofy gasket on. The design's stronger if they put the ridge on the inside and the mount point on the outside. So let's come back to the weatherproofing. Uh, on this side here you can see that there's um, a, a lip but there's actually no gasketing whatsoever so there's absolutely no ingress protection on this side of the assembly. I guess that makes sense because that's generally pointing downwards in most weather, like rain, of course, comes uh, from the other direction, so uh, it drips off. Uh, anyways, there isn't a huge amount of weatherproofing in the assembly, which is a, a bit of a disappointment because that's probably uh, one of the things that will cause this to fail, uh, especially since there's no conformal coating on the circuit board either. So if any moisture ever gets ingressed into this assembly, It'll just essentially corrode the, the uh, parts apart until they, they no longer function. Let's take a closer look at the circuit board. Uh, as I mentioned, of course, this is the uh, lithium-ion battery charger. Well, instead of photograph, you'll see there's some heavy rework going on here. 
You often see that in these low cost assemblies. It's surprising um, in a proper production facility, you would never expect to have to touch up so many components. And of course, once they touch them up, they don't bother trying to clean the flex off. Um, the wires, of course, come in to the board directly and soldered on. They're not strain relief. Uh, that, of course, could be a point where the wire would eventually uh, fracture out. Uh, let's see, a lovely little series of holes here. It's a good trick to create a higher current density in a power plane. A little series of smaller holes rather than big ones. Uh, some kind of crazy things, too, with the SMT uh, process. Uh, I'll probably actually insert another picture here, but these resistor uh, array is essentially... Um, they're all kind of crooked for some reason, which is kind of a weird thing. I'm not even quite sure what kind of phenomena would cause crooked uh, assembly. This here is the uh, LED driver. I can't find a part number uh, on it that matches any database, but uh, that's what she is. Uh, otherwise, uh, it looks like a pretty straightforward uh, SMT board. Very um, much of the parts you'd expect. Oh, and of course the uh, PIR there on the back uh, with its uh, through leads coming through. Uh, even there you can see uh, that there's little snip marks here, so they actually uh, hand uh, solder it on, they then uh, cut it with a pair of uh, side clippers. So, amazing amount of uh, human uh, intervention here on this circuit board, uh, which from a process viewpoint is always a sign of an assembly which has uh, lots of variability. Um, we get into um, much more sophisticated manufacturing environments, you try to keep people out uh, as much as possible.